YouTube. This is Terrell. Today is May the 21st, 2011. This video is being made to help people wake up to what is coming later this summer in the Elenin Comet slash Dwarf Star. This page has lots of links to resources so that you can run your own investigation like I have. This link is to a radio show, to our radio show put on by Marshall Masters, where myself, Richard Goodwin, and Ed Douglas from the Comet Ellen Research Team put on a two-hour show helping people wake up to what's coming. The official story on the Ellen and Comet, this classification, this name, is that Russian astronomer Leonid Elenin, on December 10th, discovered this guy. You can read the official story right here. There's lots of valuable information there that's true, and there's some disinformation that's not true. Now, the problem that I'm having with my investigation is as follows. Minsher Amar Bashich came out with his paper on April 11th called Astronomical Alignments as the Cause of magnitude 6 plus seismicity. In his paper, he included the Elenin Comet because of the pattern of big quakes, which is impossible for an icy mass. By definition, a comet is supposed to be 85% ice. Anything that is this large with this mass must be visible. And the astronomers that are in my groups we're having very much difficulty in seeing this thing. So there's a problem with the data according to what we're supposed to see. One problem is that on an alignment on February 27, 2010 in Chile, 8.8 .8 quake, the Earth aquifer shifted. The Earth axis shifted three inches. The next year, the Japan quake on March 11th, here we have another alignment and look what, look what happens. Earth axis shifted four inches. Earth aquifers in Florida and Texas shifted, which is pointing to a large object, something of great mass. We're talking about something of great mass bigger than Jupiter, but for some reason can't be seen. As stated in the radio show, there's a very small classification of objects that can be inbound, causing this seismicity that's invisible. One of them is a dwarf star, another is a black star or a black hole. It's a very short list. To understand why we're having these alignments, then you have to understand a little bit about the anatomy of the sun and the orbiting satellites. Our Earth is connected to the sun by magnetic portals. The sun has the largest gravity well sitting inside gravity well like this. The Earth has a smaller well. The size of the wells are depending upon the mass. These two wells are connected together by a gravity trough. And inside, those, the, inside this trough, we have the magnetic portals, which are active and inactive, different classifications. There are many, more than just one. Okay. Now, from the data that, that uh, we began receiving, from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory after December the 10th, 2010, we've been able to track this baby forwards and backwards in time. That's how we found out about the alignments. Now, this alignment here shows the Earth passing through the gravity trough between these two stars. And that's the reason that the Earth had the 9, that Japan had the 9.0 and that the Earth aquifer shifted and the Earth axis shifted because this object right here is something big. Now from this data we were able to construct a timeline of events that's included in the links in the description box. And we're able to tell exactly where this object's going to be at a particular time. You should be aware of the fact, the fact that the Russians have warned 
that this object appears to be controlled. Now, I've been tracking this object and noted the same things, that the information on my timeline had to be changed during the month of February. These, these events on the, on the perigee side, as this object is coming in, were changing. But the perigee time, when this baby reaches the point nearest the sun, has remained constant. And this alignment on the 22nd has remained constant. And there is no way that you can change part of the observations, the observation data, without changing the whole thing unless this guy is being piloted. Now there's a lot of information out there on Elenin and there's a lot of disinformation and that's what I continue to run into. You're going to find links to my 9-11 work where I'm running into the same thing, information and disinformation, and there's a common pattern. Now this post tells you how to install location pins inside of Google Sky so that you can track common Elenin. You're going to receive all these pins for each day. The distance between two pins is where Elenin is, is traveling. Elenin passed between 49 Leo and 48 Leo at this position on May the 5th and is now continuing this way. Today Elenin is right here, which gives us the LE coordinates right here at the bottom of the screen. Now the date on the outside here is going to correspond to May the 28th. And if you go to your JPL diagram and begin running things forward, then you're going to see around May the 28th is the day that we reach outside orbit position. Earth crossed LE orbit on April the 25th this way to match orbit at 1.8 AU. As you run the days forward, you're going to see that 1.8 AU is remaining just about constant because we've matched orbit, you see. That's why the Earth changes have slowed down. As we go into the future, then you're going to see a different pattern. LA is going to continue to increase in speed until the object reaches perigee position right here. The dark blue line represents Ellie below the plane. The light blue line represents Ellie above the plane. You can see that after Ellie comes through, Ellie's going to skate off and rise. Uh, here's the important part to be looking at. As we march the day forward, the days forward, watch Ellie. And what happens on September 11th? That's the day this baby reaches perigee directly in the center of the orbit next to this, closest to the sun. If you look at the 4.482 AU distance from the sun and back it up a day, you can see an increase and an increase because this is the time that the Elenin object is, is at perigee. And here's the Earth right in the way. Now, as we bring the days forward, you're going to see an important alignment come up right here. This alignment spells trouble for our planet. You notice that it's going to be the end of the day when Ellie crosses right between the Earth and the Sun directly on the ecliptic plane. problem for the Earth is all these numbers are generated by JPL. These are the ascension, the right ascension numbers. These are the declination numbers above the celestial plane. Now, as we come down, what I've highlighted here, the 23rd is the day of the equinox, the autumn equinox. That's the day that the ecliptic plane and the celestial plane intersect. Three days later, here we come, you're going to see this declination numbers. The declination numbers go from negative to positive because the Ellie object is crossing the celestial plane from negative to positive 
on the 26th, which is the same day of our alignment. Now this is the day that this Elenin object, which in my opinion is a high density dwarf star, this is the time that the magnetic portals between these two bodies are the shortest and they have grown the largest in diameter. Also, the magnetic portals running between these two stars have shrunk and so that they're at their largest diameter so that LA is siphoning off magnetic polarity from the Sun and able to use that on the Earth. Which means the magnetic pole, the magnetic portals between the Earth and the Sun are broken because LA is directly on the plane. And LA has been trying to influence our planet magnetically since 2004 is now in position to wrestle polarity control from the Sun. What that means is the North Pole of our planet is going to be repelled by this star. We know there is a polarity conflict because our magnetic poles, specifically the North Pole, magnetic pole, has been migrating and it's increasing in speed because this object this dwarf star is attempting to include our Earth in its mini solar system. It's trying to make us an orbital. And this is the day, September 26th and 27th, that this star has that opportunity. And if we continue, back this out just a little bit, and continue. On the 17th, you're going to see 0.232 AU away when this object is the nearest. And when you continue on through, then you're going to see November 22nd is another alignment day, just like 311, except for this time, the object is only 0.58 AU away instead of 2.1 AU away on the inbound side. So we're looking at another Japan quake situation that is far, far worse. So this is your resources to run your own investigation. Don't believe just because I'm telling you. Run your own investigation. Read about the aquifer shifting on these days. Read what the, the, the Drop Mantra blog is saying. It's not that the earthquake, Japan and the Chile quake caused the earth aquifers to do anything. There's not enough power there. It's the fact that all of those are symptoms. The quakes, the aquifer shifts, the earth axis shifts, they're all symptoms of the earth traveling through the magnetic portals and the gravity trough connecting two stars together. And that's the pattern that I'm seeing, that the science is saying. The reason that you can't see this object is explained by Lucas at these links. The reason you can't see this object is because it's super cold. It's a failed star. Our sun imploded and ignited because it had sufficient mass. This dwarf star imploded it did not implode. It did implode, but it didn't ignite because it has insufficient mass. A, a failed star. However, this failed star is continuing to release the protons, just like our sun. And it's the release of those protons that allows this object to be of a temperature that's just above absolute zero. Then you have the gravitational lensing effect from the high-density object sitting inside the gravity well, which shows you the stars in the distance, which gives this object a perfect cloak and so the world is asleep to the fact that we have an approaching dwarf star, and NASA is hiding the fact by giving us an Ellen and Comet, which is supposedly difficult to see, but the science says that this thing has great mass. So these are warning signs that people need to wake up and to join a survival group and to be ready for this summer, because it looks like that we're in for a very, very, very rough ride.